Welcome again to Educator.com and thank you for taking a look at this reading comprehension course that we have put together for you. To begin with reading comprehension, I'd like to do a little quick point counterpoint about uh, who thinks reading is important and what are some of the common arguments for whether or not reading is good for you. So first off, let's think. Who says that reading is important? Well, teachers say reading is important. You've been hearing that probably your whole life. I mean, I'm kind of assuming here that you're ninth grade or maybe eighth grade and, you know, you've been taught to read by your parents and by teachers. But you probably have also figured out that the students who are getting the best grades, probably the ones doing a lot of this. Naturally, your parents. You know, if your parents were like mine, they probably had the gumdrop thing where they, you know, give you a little piece of gum or they'd give you one cent for every page you read during the summer. Well, I'm sure that they think reading is important too. Did you know that millionaires also think reading is important? Yeah, I mean, I'm not kidding. I mean, you wouldn't think about a millionaire as being a bookworm, but, you know, most of them are. Most of them have not only read a lot of books, but they've also written quite a few. Naturally, authors, screenwriters, and actors all think reading is important. You know, I live in Hollywood. I know a couple of these people. They all think that this kind of thing is important. They have to read in order to not just learn how to act, but to kind of learn how to live in Hollywood and learn how to communicate with other people. And naturally, if you're an author or a screenwriter, you're not only writing all the time, you're reading all the time. Weird thing is, professional musicians and other artists are also spending a lot of time reading. Well, they have to read because, you know, well, you have to eventually study music and you have to, you know, also understand that industry really well and understand how to thrive in that industry. And finally, the craziest thing is that there are cultures with no written language that think reading is just amazing. I'm not kidding. You can Google about anthropologists or, you know, even, you know, religious missionaries that go to places that are very remote where tribes have no written language. And then they see that these powerful Europeans and their, you know, cars and their vehicles and their planes come and they got this power. They got this power to write down their language and read it. As soon as these cultures figure out that somebody else can take their language and write it down for them, and it can be written, they just think that's the most amazing thing ever. So that's who thinks reading is important. Now let's think about who does not think reading is important. Okay, nobody thinks reading is not important. This is a point that I'm trying to make. I can't think of any subject on earth that's like this where everybody thinks it's important, nobody thinks it's unimportant. You'll never hear a point counterpoint about reading. So, now that we've kind of gone over about a little bit about why reading's important, let's talk about who's taking this course. So, we're kind of talking about you here. First off, if you're a high school student, you might want to take this course. Like I said, I'm kind of assuming in this lesson that you're probably about ninth grade and that you're, you know, you're kind of thinking ahead. Or maybe you're eighth grade, you're in middle school. Well, that's kind of who this is for. But if you're also taking the writing course at educator.com, then you should be taking the reading course too. I have never taught a course where it's just reading or it's just writing before. Usually you kind of integrate the two. So yeah, this is going to be important. You're thinking about taking some entrance exams. I mean, maybe you're thinking about an entrance exam into college, or maybe, you know, you're maybe thinking about taking an entrance exam into a preparatory high school, or maybe you're thinking about taking an entrance exam into a religious high school, or maybe even a religious middle school. Whew, those entrance exams are tough, and they got a lot of tricky things that they like to do with words to fool you. And then if you take this course, you know, you'll be doing better. Maybe you, you know, you're like me in high school or like a lot of other people in high school where you're thinking, I'm bored here and I don't want to do this. I don't really care. Did you know you can graduate high school early? Has anybody ever told you that before? Well, if you take this course maybe during the summer, maybe your reading will be so good that you can actually challenge out of certain courses later. Now, I can't guarantee that because I don't know what your high school is like, but I do know that if you're really, really motivated in the summers and you just want to get out of high school quickly, you can do it. I mean, you talk to your guidance counselor about that. Like, what can I do to get out of high school one year early or even just one semester early? There are ways to do that, and this course will probably get you going on that. And finally, if you've never read a fiction novel on your own just by yourself, well, this course is for you because this is going to be kind of a little bit of introduction into literature. Now, this is not a full-blown literature course. It's not a full-blown fiction course, but you are going to be reading some fiction here. 
Now, thinking about you and thinking about you taking this course, I'd like you to maybe take some time with your own notebook and kind of think about your own goals. First off, what kind of college do you want to get into? Now, this is really important. You know, some people don't think about this, but the earlier you think about it, the better. Now, I spent a lot of time in a junior college, and honestly, I wish I'd just gone straight to a four-year. I'm not bashing junior colleges. I think they're great, but going to a four-year college all four years is a lot more fun. Finally, what kind of classes do you want to get into your senior year? This is kind of important with that whole college thing, but also kind of, you know, for your own enjoyment. I mean, senior year of high school, you're tired of high school, and you probably don't want to take a course you don't want to be in, because then you'll be bored. And there's nothing worse than being a bored high school senior. I mean, because then your motivation just kind of goes like this. But if you work hard in kind of your early years of high school, you'll be able to pick exactly what courses you want, and those will be the ones you're most interested in, and you'll take them. Finally, maybe you're, you know, 17, 16, you're ready to start thinking about your first job. It's kind of weird, you might think, about how reading connects with what your first job is, but remember what I said, you know, millionaires like to read a lot. And I'll show you in a couple minutes why reading is actually important for your job. Maybe friendships and relationships. How important are those to you? Well, it turns out that, you know, there are ways to kind of pick what kind of friendships you want and what kind of relationships you want. That way you're not the kind of person that's, you know, well, needy. And if you kind of learn to do that, you can actually, well, get that from, well, books you read. I know that sounds weird, but it is true. Again, high school early. And maybe you're like a lot of people and you're just not sure what your goals are. That's fine. Your goal right now is to explore. And you can explore by reading a lot of books. So, reading comprehension in college. So let's talk about that college goal. Again, you already know those entrance exams. Entrance exams vary by state. They're all very difficult. The end of this course, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to take care of that. But until then, what this course is really all about is to get your reading comprehension up to a nice level so that, you know, you don't necessarily have to use tricks. And you know your grades in high school are important. You know, at my college, my alma mater, I knew that they had a minimum GPA, and it was at least 3.0, which is actually kind of low for a lot of, you know, colleges. But, you know, if you practice hard, you work hard, you'll get the grades, and you'll be able to get into the college you want. And then maybe, what is college life like? I mean, it's a lot different than high school. It's one of the most exciting places you'll be. It takes a lot of preparation, though, to get used to it. There's a lot of skills that you're going to have to learn. Maybe you're thinking about reading in your first job. Well, first off, I've never been the interviewer, but I've worked with people who are. And guess what? You're judged by how you speak. This sounds crazy, but you are. It's not just how you dress when you go to work. It's not just your skills and your resume. You're actually judged by how you speak. And how much reading you do will affect the kind of language that you use in an interview. Let me tell you this, that boss interviewing you, he is as literate as your high school English teacher. What I mean is that he is as well-read as that English teacher. And so if you really want that job and you want to get in, you need to talk like him and speak like him or her because they've been doing a lot of reading. Also, some jobs require a lot more reading than others. It's not uncommon for jobs like sales or jobs like management for people to get together and they say, hey, we're all going to get together and we're all going to read this book, this book by Stephen Covey, this book on management, this book on sales, this book on charisma, and we're all going to have a reading group and we're all going to get together and read this. That's pretty intense, you know, or maybe you're going to go in the IT world. Whew. Man, there is a lot of reading in the IT world and a lot of technical languages. You have to read books that are like this, thick, and you have to keep on reading them. So don't be afraid to read for your career. I know I keep saying this, but it's true. Millionaires read one nonfiction book a month. How many have you read? Now, there's another big important reading, and that's reading for democratic ideals. You've probably gotten out of eighth grade civics by now, so you probably understand that, hey, we live in a democratic government where the people have the right to rule. Well, 
I'm going to show you by this wonderful quote what democracy is not. Anti-intellectualism has a constant thread winding its way through our political and cultural life. Nurtured by the false notion that democracy means my ignorance is as good as your knowledge. I was said by science fiction author Isaac Asimov. He was a very, very prolific writer. He didn't just write sci-fi. But this thing right here, my ignorance is just as good as your knowledge, is what a lot of people think democracy is. And I'm going to show you why that is not the case. This go, these two things go all the way back to the Founding Fathers. They go all the way back to Thomas Jefferson and George Washington and John Adams. And they said this, The right to self-govern is something you are born with. Everybody, no matter where they are on the planet, has the right to self-govern. The ability to self-govern is something that must be learned. Sounds kind of high-minded, doesn't it? But that is the case. I mean, Thomas Jefferson thought, hey, man, I bet if we just had people reading so much and we just made them so smart, well, we wouldn't even need the government anymore, would we? Because people would just be so good and they'd be just so self-sufficient that, hey, you know, maybe we don't need stuff like the FDA. Now, I'm not saying that's maybe a little bit far. I do think that the FDA is a good thing. But you get kind of the idea. You're not born with the ability to self-govern. You're born with the ability to learn to self-govern. And that's part of the reason why, well, we love libraries so much in the United States. So, by the end of this class, let's think about those goals again. You're going to be better prepared for entrance exams by the time you finish this course. You're also going to be introduced to short fiction. I'm not going to have you read a novel like in the writing course, but you'll be reading some fun short stories here and there. You're going to learn about 100 new words. And chances are, you're going to learn more than that. More importantly, you're going to learn a better way than just looking at a dictionary and memorizing words. And you'll have the tools to find whatever books that will help you and whatever goals you have. I'm assuming here that, you know, as probably a ninth grade or high school student, middle school student, your goals are going to be very, very, very from person to person. No matter what they are, there are books out there to help you and guide you to get there. So that's why I want to make sure that you understand the importance of this reading course. So, to get prepared to be successful in this reading course, there are certain things you need. Number one is you need access to the library. I've kind of set up this course so that you don't have to purchase books unless you really, really want to. I'm going to go ahead and assume that you can use your library, you know, and that can be your county library, your high school library, your middle school library, wherever. Just get to the library. And if you can't find the book you need at that library, talk to the librarian and say, hey, how can you get this book delivered here? I use the library for this course, and I had to get library books delivered, and I had to pick them up. Also, I have good news for those of you who love to draw. You need blank pieces of paper and something to draw with. Yes, you will be drawing in this course. I don't expect your art to be brilliant or wonderful, but I would like to see you draw. You'll need a dictionary. As you learn vocabulary, you'll eventually have to go back to dictionary. There are some recommended sources that I have links to in the notes for this lesson. But really, one dictionary you can use is just dictionary.com. You can just go to the web and Google your definitions that way. Another thing I highly recommend is the Oxford English Dictionary, which is a very big, expensive dictionary that you can probably find at a library. Also. Just like the writing course, you'll need a notepad. Don't be afraid to take notes during this course, and don't be afraid to take notes on the things that you're reading. And there's one other thing that you'll need to be successful. First off, you need those right groups of friends. Part of learning, especially learning how to read, is that it has to be kind of a group effort. So I really, really hope that, you know, as you're taking this course, that you have friends who are not only just supporting you in this, telling you it's a good idea, but are also going to be taking this course with you so that as you read these short stories and as you have certain questions and you can go over them with your friends and talk about what you're reading and what you're learning. It's going to be much more natural that way if you, do, if you learn that way with a group of friends. Also, 
this course is going to have a lot of reading, so you have to kind of schedule things that are important to you. What I mean by things that are important would be something like, you know, you got sports, maybe you have a part-time job, maybe you have certain times with friends. There's all kinds of things that you have to do that are important to you, that are important for your goals. Schedule those and then schedule the time that you're reading. Lastly, you have to kind of decide what's unimportant. If you go, and go ahead and start learning and start reading, there are going to be some things that you're not going to be able to do for the next couple of weeks. That's just kind of how it is. So figure out what's kind of distracting you and figure out what's not fruitful. And we're going to go over that in the next lesson and let that be unimportant to you. Finally, there is one very, very important but very, very simple assignment for this first lesson before you go on to the next one. You need to get to Google. And you need to Google how a fish almost destroyed my childhood. And then you need to go ahead and read that fun little story. You'll find the blog. You'll know it when you see it. Google how a fish almost destroyed my childhood. Thanks for using educator.com. Go enjoy that little reading, and I'll see you at the next lesson.